Let's sure plus Giz Audio Galileo. Are they worth $109? Find out next. Hey, welcome back to the Thrift Shop. Here at Thrift Shop, we try to bring you value by finding high-performing items, audio items, and is this one of them? So this is the newly released Let's Sure Galileo in-ear monitor tuned by Giz Audio. I love Giz Audio. Um, Timmy, he does a great job with his videos. I like uh, one of the reasons I purchased that, that I basically like a lot of the, I guess, sound characteristics that he does. So, and he does a great job with videos and, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, I thought I would support him and let sure and uh, see how these go. Uh, these things are absolutely gorgeous. Um, every uh, faceplate is individual, uh, multicolor. You got some glitter in there. Um, they're not bedazzled, but hey. These things are literally one of a kind and $109. I did pre-order mine and uh, received them recently, so I've been listening to these for a while. They are, I believe, 14 ohms, so yeah, pretty low, so that could be a problem for some, some things you're going to drive. Um, even though it can be easy to drive, it can... Uh, uh, sound gritty on uh, some audio devices. Um, I am using the iFi Pro I Can uh, with the Bifrost 264, and I was also using the Denifrips Aries 2 um, for all of my listening experiences uh, because that's what I've been using recently, and uh, it's easy to compare sounds. So Oh, oh, these are 114 decibel uh, sensitivity. So yeah, there are you know it's easy to get some some music out of them. Um, on the Pro I can this does have the uh, IE match, so um, I don't need all 14 watts of this thing. But um, it does match to low impedance uh, IEMs rather well. But you do have to turn it up to get it to work. And yeah, so nice blue uh, resin back. One 10, 10 millimeter oh, liquid silicon surround dynamic driver with one BA. So hybrid uh, in your monitor. Um, given the performance of today's IEMs coming uh, out of China, Chi Fi, um, you know, do these perform? And we'll get into that. So I'm going to throw up the frequency response graph here. Bump. Should be up by now, and um, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty harmonish and uh, pretty standard. So there's nothing uh, in here that's going to be wonky at all. So, and I think that's one of the reasons that you want uh, Giz Audio to tune an IEM. Pretty experienced with uh, frequency response graphs and, and uh, his ties to critical. So yeah, these are pretty cool. I have no ties affiliation with Let Sure or Giz Audio. Uh, they don't know who the heck I am at all. Because, you know, there's probably going to be like 50 people watching this, so who cares? Anyways, um, yeah, just another IEM to add in my collection. Oh, by the way, this I've only got like two more, I'm sorry. i I got to get to decks and speakers and other stuff, so i got to stop. i got to, I just, I have, a, I have an IEM problem when they're released, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, the frequency response, there's really nothing... You know, it's going to be bad. Um, listening to this, uh, my first impression was that they're smooth. Um, super smooth. Super relaxed. Actually, I did not like it on an R2R DAC. Um, it just didn't give me the layering, separation, depth, and, and all the details uh, that you get. This is a very relaxed DAC. Uh, the Denifrips Aries 2 is very smooth. The two of those are too rounded, too smooth, and you could probably listen for hours and hours, but if you like detail, then the R2R with, this is not going to be worked too good. 
nothing wrong with that. Just not my preference. So uh, most of my listening came from the Bifrost uh, 264, which is a multi-bit DAC. And um, it's very detailed with the new... Uh, the new uh, chips that they put in their FPGAs or whatever they are. So yeah, nice looking. Um, one of the albums that I always listen to um, whenever I get something new, sorry about that, I had to step away for a minute. I had a barking dog and a phone call, so hope everything's back to where it is. Um, anyways, getting back into the album that I, I normally listen to, which is uh, Corn Unplugged, MTV Unplugged reason I like it, it has a lot of very, a lot of instruments, the layering separation, how it was recorded, everything is great. So you kind of hear kind of the detailed precision, you know, you, you can pick out the instruments easily, the vocals, especially Freak on, Freak on a Leash with Amy Lee. Um, these just, uh, number one, it's an amazing listen. Um, these just kind of glide over. The details are there. They're just not raised to a level where you're getting separation. You can feel different things in different parts of the air going around. Nothing wrong with that. It is a, an easy listen, and I think a lot of people are going to like that. So I think a lot of people in hi-fi either are uh, detail hounds. And I consider myself one of those, so I'm always trying to get more detail um, and not through high highest resolution files, that kind of stuff, um, purely by having, you know, good clocks in your system, good, um, you know, drivers if they're speakers, good speaker cabinets, IEMs, you know, headphones. Um, I love planars for the speed, the detail that you can get out of them. And, you know, this is not one of those. I'm not calling this bad at, by any means. It's smooth. I'm going to enjoy this for a long time. Um, I just didn't get a sense of the pluck of the guitar, you know, when you can hear it, you know, vibrating back and forth. You just don't get that. You hear the note, it glides over, next note, next note. You're just not getting the depth of the detail coming out of these. So, you know, again, nothing wrong with that. I think it's a great IEM. Is it worth $109? Well, I got to do a comparison, so I'm going to put these down. So here... This is the Sound Notes Zero. I did a review. Um, you can go check it out. And I think these are 24, 25 bucks, somewhere right around there. Certainly, number one, from, um, you know, just aesthetics and look, you know, this is 24 bucks, right? Plastic, um, you know, uh, almost has that KZ kind of look to it. Um, you don't get good ear tips. The cable is absolutely horrible. So, you know, you could change the cable for 25 bucks. I mean, come on. But the sound of these is almost identical. Almost identical to the Galileo. So, what you're getting with the Galileo is much better cable. And I have to say, this cable is beautiful. It's smooth enough. It doesn't catch. It's flexible. You know, there's no jankiness to this. This is pulled out. You know, I have not tried to straighten this. I mean, it's just, I love this cable. You know, this could be a $50 cable that, you know, if you put on here, you know, then it would be 75 bucks to put in perspective. So, yeah, I mean, you're getting a lot more um, with this IEM. You know, the custom caps, I mean, those things are just gorgeous. So, you know, you're getting a little, you're paying a little more for a better cable, um, better styling. You know, if those things matter to you, then yeah, you're going to go for the $109. If all you want is smooth sound re reproduction, then go spend 25 bucks on the Sound Notes Zero. Just doing a back-to-back -back listen, I did feel that there was a little more detail coming out of these so um, still both of these are not going to be super monstrous wide soundstage um, you're not going to feel a lot of depth um, it's all kind of in your head and just you know around your head nothing wrong with that for you know a hundred dollar sub hundred dollar IEM 
but just know that's the kind of sound that you're going to get from these. So, hey, I hope you like this really quick review. Um, I'm glad Let Sure made this and that Giz Audio uh, tuned this. Uh, two great IEMs. If you're in the market, upcoming IEMs, um, I have one that is not so good. Yeah, that little guy over there. So that'll be a really short one. And I'm going to get to a really good value. So I know this has been out for a while. Moondrop Quarks. I've just been listening to these for a while. I think these are like 14, 15 bucks and probably the best deal in the market today. I also had the DSP. I use those at work. Absolutely wonderful. So I'll be talking about these and of course a lot more equipment. So again, I got to get back to turntable. I got the Technics SL1210GR that I've been listening to for about five months, way overdue. So please, if you can, small channels like myself and any other, anybody else, if you're watching videos and you want to get information, you know, even if it's not mine, just please dislike and subscribe. It costs you absolutely nothing and it helps out, you know, content creators like myself. So, hey, please, that's all I can ask if you made it this far. And I greatly appreciate it. Again, thanks from the thrift shop. Bye.